Hello, my name is Tom Lee and welcome to my demonstration of the Panhead Face Bow. The purpose of a face bow is to relate the plane of occlusion to a plane of reference. So the upper surface of this face bow is your plane of reference. We are going to orientate to the axis via the ear holes of the patient and we're also going to choose a third point of reference. Some doctors have actually palpated the lower border of the eye to put a spot on the nose so that they can use an orbital pointer to level the front end or to designate the third point of reference. Research has also been done to show that the lower border of the eye is approximately 22 millimeters below nasion, so many systems have been standardized with a nasion relator. This nasion relator can just slide into the little slot section here in the front of the face bow. We can tighten in place here. I like to pull the nasion back away, tighten in place here, if we put this onto a patient, go ahead and reach up and put this in your ears like a stethoscope. And then I can tighten a large screw here and I can raise or lower this till I get to the nasion relator. That you can see when this patient's sitting erect looking forward that there's a cant upward to the face bow. And although this may be related functionally correct to a plane of reference in the axis, it may not be aesthetically correct when we get to the articulator. So we're going to show you a new system we developed. Go ahead and remove that from your ears. I'm going to remove the standard nasion relator and we actually have an adjustable nasion relator. And the adjustable nasion relator has two extensions. One extension here goes from 25 to 35 millimeters and the second extension here goes from 35 to 45 millimeters. I like to start with the 35 to 45 millimeter extension and start at the 40 millimeter mark. So now we'll go ahead and attach this to the face bow by lining it to the slot and tightening the screw on the bottom. And now we can also attach our bite fork assembly. And the bite fork assembly has a shorter end and it also has a longer end. And we like the shorter end to go into the crossbar, but some people would inadvertently put the wrong end into the crossbar. So we designate a little A here on the top of the pin that also coordinates with the little A you see here onto the top of the crossbar. So we just line A with A, make sure the flat is towards the screw, and then we can tighten that screw, locking the stem assembly in place. So now we have the face bow ready for the patient use. So what we'll do next is go ahead and get the plane of occlusion. We do that with a bite fork. It does have a dental midline mark here, and we can use either wax or bite registration material but we also developed a little panadent bite tab, which is a red impression compound that's been put on a self-adhesive strip. You can just simply peel a corner of the bite tab off of the paper and stick that over each molar area. And we'll also stick one in the anterior area for the incisor. Now since there is a line there to line up with the incisor, I like to place the bite tab sideways in that spot so I don't cover up that line. Now we have the bite tabs onto the bite fork, we can now temper this in hot tap water to soften the compound for the registration. So now we've softened the compound in hot water, we act, can actually squeeze it a little bit into a cone shape if we need to, and also make sure that it's softened. We can now open the patient's mouth, place this in, align up the dental midline with the patient's dental midline, pushing up in the front as well as in the back. And we take this out, and we can see they've got indentations of both the molars as well as the incisors. We can now put this in cold water to harden the compound. Now we can try this back in the patient's mouth to make sure we have a good fit. And it seems to fit real well. It doesn't rock or anything. So now we can actually dry the lower surface here. A lot of people would actually juggle cotton rolls underneath the bite fork and have the patient bite up against the cotton rolls. You could also use bite tabs on the lower surface and have the patient bite up against the bite tabs. But we also developed a new little product called Bite Fork Stabilizer. It's basically just a soft sponge material that has a little paper backing here that we can peel off. And we can now stick this onto the bottom of the bite fork. And now that gives something for the patient to bite into when we place this back in the mouth. So we go back in the mouth, get lined up where we had our index, and bite up. Now we come in with the face bone, have the patient reach up, and put it in their ears like a stethoscope, and then I tighten the large screw here in the front. Now I can raise or lower this until I can get the nasion relayer related to the patient's nasion, and I do like to push slightly, bringing the face bone slightly forward in their ears. That helps stabilize the whole face bone. Now our hands are free. 
And we can look to see with the level gauge that we created that we need to level this down slightly to where you can see it's now level from a profile view. We can turn the level gauge in the frontal plane to see if it's level in the frontal plane, which it's pretty close. Some patients have one ear that's slightly higher than the other, so we can have the patient move it in the soft tissue of the ears slightly to level that level gauge to the horizon. We've now leveled our plane of reference so we can capture the cants and tilts of the occlusal plane, how it looks in the patient's face, and get that same look on the articulator. So now we have our hands free so we can go ahead and attach the clamps. And we swing this so that the clamp goes all the way towards the patient. And I like to grab that clamp to offset any torque and we tighten both these screws really, really tight, as tight as you can make them. And then we tighten the vertical post here, as tight as you can. Now I go ahead and loosen the large screw and the nasion, have the patient open their mouth, have them pull it out of their ears, and we can take the Facebook downward and forward away from the patient. At this point, I can loosen the little screw here, which will release the bite fork assembly, which will go to the laboratory for mounting the maxillary cast. The Facebook can be cleaned and stayed in the operatory for use with the next patient.